Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Ramble. We go on from now until midnight Eastern Daylight Time, and we'll get to our citizens panel in a little bit. But first, we like to talk to our old friend. Ladies and gentlemen, San Francisco, California, is the current residence of Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. My rent-controlled residence, yes. Your rent-controlled residence. We'll talk about that in a second. But where are you from originally? I am from Ohio. Yeah. Home of Jonathan Winters. Yeah. Pro- produce some great people. So how did you wind up in San Francisco? I, I was out of high school, and my parents, my sister lived here. She moved got married and moved out here. They came out and visited. They said, we want to move to San Francisco. So they left, and I just kind of tagged along. Oh, okay. And then you just stayed there. So what what age did you go to San Francisco? Uh, It was uh, like uh, 1970. I was 18. 18. Okay. So all of a sudden at 18, you've got a whole new home. Yeah, it was uh, quite a shock. Because everybody thinks of you as a San Francisco resident, which you really are, you know. I guess at this point I am, but I remember San Francisco is all it's crazy expensive now, but it, even then it was more expensive than most places because in Ohio our, we had a house, and the house payment was $125. Yeah. And when we moved out here, the apartment we got was $250. Wow. So uh, San Francisco has always been a little more expensive, hasn't it? Always expensive, yes. Yeah. Yeah, although uh, not as expensive as it is now. Like I was no, paying. No, it's insane now. In my top rent at uh, in the, the marina, one of my apartments. I had two apartments. One was fifteen hundred a month. The other was twenty three hundred a month. And um, I would imagine today that isn't true, right? Those would be about five or six thousand each. You know. Wow. Hmm. Hmm. Well, too rich for my blood. <laughs> you should have. Yeah, if only you had kept those. Yeah, I, if they they were. I guess everything was kind of rent controlled, wasn't it? They were rent controlled, so yeah, and they're rent controlled till you move out. Till you move out. So if I had never moved out, if I had just kept that apartment and sublet it, or something, uh, I could have. Uh, I could have had an apartment in San Francisco for twenty three hundred dollars or even fifteen hundred dollars. That you know, they could only raise it how much every every couple. It's like of years. about one percent a year. One percent a year. So yeah. over ten years, it goes up ten percent. So you're paying what mm-hmm. nine hundred now? I'm paying five. I'm paying five hundred. Really, five hundred? Well, seven. Well, plus I got to pay. I got a garage, so that's like seven hundred. Whoa. Well, they 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 just they must be spiking your water, trying to kill you or something. Uh, we've had so many owners. We've had we did have an owner ten years ago that tried to give us money to leave. Yeah. And. Uh, How much was he offering yeah. you? He never called me. The neighbor down the hall, she had a bigger unit. They gave. They said, "Would you leave her?" They started with twenty thousand. It got up to eighty thousand, and she said, "No, really? she's still there." Yeah, you know something? It, it, it wouldn't be worth it if you think about well, it. Well, she told me. I ran into her last week. She said, yeah, it was 80000 but she said, that's taxable, and then how far was that going to take her? So yeah, yeah. Wouldn't have been much, you know. Well, and she's still there? She's still there. Really? Son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. They, must be, they must be spiking her water and stuff, you know? Because <laughs> all you've got is a studio, so it's not as valuable as a one-bedroom yeah, apartment. Yeah, she's got the one-bedroom, and uh, there's two other people here that have been here longer than I have. So. Yeah, yeah. But uh-huh. I think they're making so much money off the other eight tenants, they can afford it. So. 
Uh huh. They're making a profit. Yeah. So I mean, like for instance, there are other tenants in your building who are newer, right? Yeah, and they're all paying the market rate. What's the market rate? About thirty five hundred. Really? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Because our building, our building's so old. It's not. I mean, if it was better shape, it'd be more money. It's getting yeah. so bad that I, I was walking down the street the other day. There's a bunch of construction work going on in this building. I finally found out they, the guy had two garage spaces and he converted them to apartments. Wow. Oh boy. So where where are you located? I've never been to your apartment, and I don't know anybody who has. Few people have. <laughs> remember, I remember I sent Feldman down to the Shell station because he wanted to use my bathroom once. Oh yeah, yes, yes. Uh, because you don't I didn't like. Didn't want him to quote foul my bowl. <laughs> Is that for real? But yeah, that's real. Yeah. You don't like people using your toilet. <laughs> Bodily functions make me very nervous. Especially other people's. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mine are all right. Yours are okay. Yeah. Uh, wow. Wow. So he went down to the shell station. Yes, I seem to remember that story, and he he confirmed it as being true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Well. <laughs> so uh, uh, you don't like them fouling your bowl? Fouling the bowl. Well, if you had an apartment with two bathrooms, then you wouldn't have a problem. you keep one bathroom for people who, you know. And, yeah. and you'd never have to clean it. You could let it look like it was a... Uh, a toilet in a gas station. Like a shell station. Like yeah. a shell station, right? You know, and it's, people could write on the walls and things like that. But no, you got to have an apartment with only one toilet. And see, I never <laughs> mind other people using my toilet. I don't know what it, you know, I'm, I'm a hypochondriac, but I'm not worried that I, somehow. Yeah, I'm surprised. I'm surprised you're not. So, I mean, well, uh, you see, I, I think Larry David does that like he didn't want and the curb your enthusiasm, people using this bathroom was kind of a no. Really? Yeah. Okay, well, here's the thing uh, about toilets. They're not all that dirty. If the toy, They say they have gone around and they have checked out the bathrooms and parts of the bathrooms. And when they would go to the toilet, you know, seat, and swab it and then look for bacteria and things like that. It wasn't nearly as bad as, guess what? The handle on the door to the bathroom. Yeah, I can imagine, sure. Yeah, that, that really uh, the stuff that goes on in a toilet isn't that unsanitary. In fact, toilets are created to be sanitary. That's why you drop your turds in water. Is this going to be more than you need to know, folks? It's a little scatological. <laughs> no, that's why you drop turds in water, because the water keeps them from smelling up the place, and they keep, it keeps them in kind of a sterile atmosphere, and then you flush it. So mm -hmm. I, what I don't understand is what about David Feldman going, well, he is repulsive, but uh, what, <laughs> what is so repelling about David Feldman using your toilet when you think or about anyone. it, they're, well, they're gonna they're gonna be touching certain areas of the body. Then they're gonna be like touching the handle, touching the doorknobs, touching the uh, yeah the, uh, the the washers and the sink. Now you you uh, you, uh, you uh, Larry is straight. Larry has dated, right, Larry? I have, and not in years, but I have, yes. Yeah, uh, and and he's not a virgin, I don't believe. Am I right, Larry? I don't think so. No, I, I have receipts to prove it. You have receipts? <laughs> I have receipts to prove it. Um, so uh, we've established that. Have you ever brought a woman back to your apartment? I have, yes. Okay, and what happens when she says she wants to use the bathroom after, say, you've been through romancing her? Or, or <laughs> well, it, well at, I, at I guess romance, romancing her is a bad term to use with Larry. Romancing her. How about completing the transaction? Completing the transaction. Yeah. If she wants to use your toilet, your bathroom, to clean up. Yes, I'd let, them, I'd let them use it, and then... Uh, 
I do a uh, like a three mile island clean up the next day. <laughs> really? Yeah. So you're that? Oh yeah, it's like bleach and foam and. You're a germaphobe. That's what yeah. it is. I've never been a germaphobe. You know, I'm horrible. I don't believe in the five second rule. I mean, if it's been down on the floor for ten seconds, I'll eat it. You know. <laughs> well, because I've never, I've never felt that I ever caught anything from not being sanitary. You know, that I, food could drop on the floor right here, and I pick it up and eat it. It wouldn't, nothing would happen. Okay, but that would mm -hmm. be repulsive to you, right? Yeah. I'm my doctor did tell me germ phobes do tend to get sick less. Really? Mm -hmm. uh, who do we know? There's some other people we know that are germaphobes. Um, uh, I don't. I never knew Howie Mandel, but he's a germaphobe. He's like worse than me, from what I've read. He he's, won't. He's he will psycho. not even touch his own kids. What? That's what I read. Yeah. How do you not touch your own kids? <laughs> Daddy never hugged me. He felt I was infested. <laughs> you know what? What do you what do you tell the shrink on that one? Jeez Almighty. Um. So, uh, so, but you you literally the next day after a woman had been there and used your bathroom, you did go in and do a complete thorough cleaning. Mm hmm. What's the best cleaner? Bleach. The bleach is bleach is really good for killing germs. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't see the germs. And I'll I bet know. if I'll bet if somebody went in and did a uh, a biological work workup on your toilet, they could not find any bacteria or any significant bacteria. Yeah. Let's hope so. Like urine, which I'm sure you will be bothered by. Urine is one of the most sterile uh, things we Urine's have. Pretty sterile, yeah. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's as sterile as ammonia. In fact, I think it has some ammonia in it. It does, yes. Yeah, so urine is quite sterile. In fact, if you ever get a snake bite, uh, you should pee on your foot, you know, or wherever <laughs> the snake bite is. Uh, I've heard that, and if you get burned, uh, stung by a jellyfish. <laughs> Yeah, you, you yeah. So uh, now let's say you got stung by a jellyfish, and we were out vacationing together. <laughs> would you? Let I know me, where this is going, and the answer is no. Would you let me pee on you? <laughs> no. Even if that jellyfish sting meant you were going to die. Well, I'll take death. You'll take death first over. <laughs> I'll take death. Over me peeing on your jellyfish yes. wound. My my. You are you are glutton for punishment, aren't you? I'm a conf I'm a devoted germaphobe. Of course I have a funny feeling you're not going to go anywhere where there are jellyfish, so this is a moot point. It's a moot point, yeah. Yeah. Which, uh, would, be, which would be the name That'd be a good name for a California city, moot point. Moot point. Yeah, what <laughs> What uh what uh what other uh uh phobias do you have? Uh, you said uh, I kind of got over the flying phobia. I think as as you get older, you kind of accept death more. So he's okay, bring it on. <laughs> I'm not accepting death at all. That's my biggest fear right now. Yeah, you seem to be getting worse. I was, I was I was telling I uh, was I was telling uh, was I telling you earlier or Durst because I was interviewing Durst earlier uh, that uh, I uh, uh, wow that I. Uh, uh, have, have just this giant phobia about death, so much so that I wake up in the morning where people go, oh, wow, what a wonderful day, you know? Uh, I go, what is it's going to kill me? <laughs> you know, what is it today? Like, you know, as I say, I have this lightheadedness this week, and I'm thinking this is some form of cancer or something. You know, and really it isn't a sign of anything. It could just be no. I, my low-carb diet could be causing it, you know? Uh, any number of things could be causing it, but it still it it's it's amazing to me. You know, it's probably pollen, but still I think it's something that's going to kill me. So that's how how just 
And, and uh, um, my wife last night said, you know something? You're the most unhappy person I've ever known. <laughs> and that could well be. You know? But uh, I John Cleese on my show, and he used a term I, I love to use, and that is, uh, as I approach old age with the grave ever yawning. <laughs> ever yawning. You know, uh, and and uh, uh, I I'm, I have this great fear of death, and I realize chances of me being here ten years from now is uh, small at best. Uh, it bothers me, and then I have this friend uh, Jack uh, Garfine, who's he's eighty eight years old, and he's not in great shape. <laughs> all right, and I'm thinking if I live to be that old. God, you know, will I, will I actually be praying for death? You know, but right now, I it's my great fear, and I'm not making plans wow. past next year. You know, so what do I do? And and you know, I hate to say this, you you're much younger than I am. How old are you now? Sixty six? Did you say? I'm, I'm uh, yeah, I'm uh, yeah, about thirteen years younger than you. You're about thirteen years younger than me, but you could go tomorrow. Okay, you could uh, go tomorrow. I think we. After you hit 60, I think it, if you drop dead, it's not a surprise to anybody, right? Well, you know, I don't know. When I hear of somebody going at 60, I go, gee, that's kind of sad, you know. Uh, on the other hand, my uh, I'll, sh I'll give you an example. My mother lived to be 100, okay? When she was 92, her 93-year-old friend died. And the first thing she said to me was, but she was so young. <laughs> really? <laughs> and I went, geez, Mom, uh, well, I guess that's what we figure, is that that's young, you know? Well, you, well, you've got those genetics. Maybe you'll go to 100. It, it, it could be that I go to 100, but I, I have a, uh, I possibly have prostate cancer. Uh, but at my age, it's so slow and you know, they can take, give me hormones and slow it down. They can do a whole bunch of things and slow it down without even cutting it out. And he said, with the hormones, I can keep you alive till 95. And I looked at him and I went, yeah, but my mother lived to be 100, so that's what I'm shooting for. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I mean, I, uh, you know, but if I have prostate cancer, I can then start using that as an excuse why I can't do something. I'm sorry, I can't do that today. I've got cancer. You know. uh, but uh, anyway, there's a good chance I've got it. But the good chance that 70% of men out there over the age of, uh, I think it's over the age of, of 75, will have prostate cancer, some right. form of it. Now, that doesn't mean that it's going to kill you or that it's, it's aggressive. But you do have it. That's what happens to your prostate. I, I hate to think the thing I had so much fun with all those years is now coming to attack me. Coming back, wreak okay. havoc. But anyway, so I, you know that that I, I I think I may have that, but it's not. That's not the thing that's going to get me. So I wait for that stroke or whatever, you know, and then I keep. See, that's what that's what I worry about more. I'm just worrying what's going to come up on me. Is it going to be a stroke? Is it going to be a cancer? Uh, I worry a lot about that stuff. I okay. I worry about that more than death. Well, you worry about some kind of disability that will yeah, not allow, yeah. well, for instance, it will not allow you to perform any longer. Yeah, or even even get around by myself. That'd be horrible. I mean, if you have a stroke, isn't this wonderful discussion, folks, we're having here? If you have a stroke, the stroke, it could be uh, now, the com now the comedy of Larry Bubbles Brown. <laughs> we need to get we need to have somebody that will give us a pill to kill us if we are in a horrible situation we got to move to oregon for that yeah my ex-wife is planning <laughs> on that because she's got terminal cancer and she says one day she's going to take that pill you know i said to her we the thing about life is you never know when you're going to die which i always thought would be a good idea It'd be a bad idea to know when you're going to die, but it'd be a good idea to know how fast to spend your money. You know, 
Like, yeah, it'd be nice to have like some ballpark figure so you could like leave a nickel, you know? Yeah, I'm, well, I'm quietly uh, uh, using my money so I won't run out of it when I'm a hundred, okay? Uh, and and believe me, you got to go slow when all you've got is ten thousand dollars. But anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so I go slowly, and I go. Suppose I die tomorrow, and I didn't use this money up. What, what a waste! But suppose I use it all up tomorrow, and I live to be a hundred. So if you knew when you were going to die, it's much like going out and getting a sonogram to seeing what the what the sex of the child is going to be, so you know what kind of clothes to buy it. You know. Uh, you have no idea how long your money's going to last. So, whatever. This is not depressing, folks. And now I'm lightheaded. And the worst, the worst thing in the world, I think, would be to be old and broke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not that, but you know, we we don't. We're not luxuriating in lots of money either. You know. Uh, I have, you know, I've got, I've got the social security, and I've got the uh, small after pension, and uh, I've got, uh, you know, Marjorie has a house, a home, it's almost paid for that she rents out that uh, she bought for one hundred twenty-five thousand, and now it's worth over four hundred thousand, you know. So we have something, you know, we have uh, fallbacks, as it were. Yeah, but, yeah the but, house is huge. Yeah, well, we're fighting to keep it, too. You know, that, that thing keeps going. That's the gift that keeps on giving this court date thing we've been having. Uh, there's, a, there's another one coming up, another court date in, uh, what, a couple of, uh, couple of weeks? Uh, I see here on the calendar. No, no, not there. That's June. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, it's on the 18th. They go to court. Uh, we, we have no idea how this thing is going to turn out. This is the most ridiculous thing in the world. Uh, it's but, gone on so long. And we haven't paid rent, you know, in what? Six years? Something like That's that. That's unbelievable. Which eventually we'll probably have to pay something, you know, but whatever settlement we get will more than pay for that. So I'm, I'm not wor we're not worried about that. But nevertheless, it, it'd be nice to just know this is ours, you know, to live in and to. Yeah, well, uh, that's the strangest case I've ever heard of in rental history. Well, well, I never thought I would get myself into a situation like this. Oh, granted, you know, we've had something like fifty thousand dollars in lawyers' fees, you know, fifty-five, we think, somewhere around in there. Uh, uh, so uh, you know uh, we and we paid that out over six years, but that's almost like paying rent. Yeah. You know. So uh, and and hopefully we'll get that money back because part of our suit back is that we get the lawyers' fees, uh, mm -hmm. which are not small. You know, we're not having a lawyer that pads the books. On the other hand, like most lawyers, every time you call up to wish him a happy birthday, you get a bill for it. You know. <laughs> I had that happen with my lawyer in San Francisco years ago. I, I call him up. For, uh, I get a call from my business manager, Gary, and he says, "What did you call? Uh, what did you call uh, Mr. Turtle about uh, on Wednesday of such and such?" Oh, I said, "That's his birthday. I wished him a happy birthday." He says, "We got a bill for it." <laughs> wow. I said, "Well, I guess we got to find a new lawyer." So then I went out, and I hate Mr. Turtle is not a good name for a lawyer anyway. Uh, because it doesn't engender fear when you talk to people about having to talk to your lawyer, Mickey Turtle. So uh, uh, I then my next lawyer was Mr. Reamer, and that's a great name, okay? Yeah. <laughs> for a lawyer, because you know you want to talk to somebody, talk to my lawyer, Mr. Reamer. Oh, Reamer. The Reamer. <laughs> yeah, he died, you know. Recently, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which I felt bad about because I really liked Fred. Fred was, I was very close to Fred. Fred was very. He, did, he didn't charge you for a birthday greeting. Mm -mm. No. As a matter of fact, he did some stuff for me, not charging me, just giving me advice, you know. And I said, send me a bill. He says, ah, you know. We just had a talk, that's all, you know. So I always liked Great. him. Always liked him, you know. Um, 
So anyway, so life with Larry Bubbles Brown is, uh, is, is it improving? Is it the same? Is it worse? It's not, it's better than it's been, uh, say, 10 years ago. I'm, I'm actually making more money and oh, really? a little better. Because you're established. I was, I was trying to figure out, God, my, my savings account was just going down for years, and now I've actually saved a little money, and I realized, oh, it's, I'm not paying it. Now I'm on Medicare. Ah. Which has saved me. I was paying like towards the end, eight hundred bucks a month for Kaiser. I was paying more than my rent for health insurance. Yeah, so that took care of that. Now that took care of that. Now yeah, it's down to like a, it's now it's down to a hundred. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Larry, we've run out of time. It's and we didn't think we could do, <laughs> but we did. We did one more. <laughs> yeah, we do two at a time here, folks. Anyway, yeah. uh, nice talking to you, Larry. Always good talking to you. Good luck at the court date. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. How are you? I'm Alex Bennett, and this is The Ramble. And I'm opening up the uh, Skype lines here so that things can uh, proceed in normal fashion as we initiate the citizen panel, which is our exclusive thing we do here and we're happy to do it too anyway um uh listen i have uh, uh, the lines are open and uh, it's a fill free night so that means that scott can call and tom if you're out there you can call and uh, everybody can call and and get a word in edgewise which is kind of nice all right okay Anyway, uh, I do this video every night because I want to show people what an ugly guy looks like, how age gets the best of you, and also to scare little children, okay? That's why I do the video. And you can call this by call using Skype, and then we'll actually put your picture on the, on the, on the YouTube, as it were, all right? Okay. Uh, I got a little piece of good news. Um... Uh, about, God, maybe six months ago, maybe longer than that, I saw a thing in this business journal for podcasts that said, hey, uh, iHeartRadio is going to be doing podcasts, all right? And I said uh, to myself, well, hot, hot deal. Okay, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I'll, I'll continue with what I was saying in just a moment. But I have to go get Scott Boddicker in here. Let me see here. Hi there, Scott. Let me just get your uh, your face uh, on the uh, on, on the intranet. There we go. And I uh, go transition. And there there you are. Just just you and me right now. Excellent. Yeah. So anyway, so I, what I was saying. Oh, here comes another one. Okay. Well, let me first let me get all these taken care of here. All right. And it's Charlie Wallace, ladies and gentlemen, and he uh, had one a space last night, so he should pop right in on that space. There he is. Okay. Uh, so Hi. now we have Charlie Wallace. Okay. All right. Uh, let me see. Shall I, shall I continue with my story? And, well, if somebody calls, I'll have to stop. Anyway, here, here is the, uh, here, here's what I had to uh, tell you. So... It said that uh, iHeartRadio was, uh, you know what iHeartRadio is. It's probably the biggest broadcasting, radio broadcasting organization in the country. Um, that, but uh, they, uh, they were going to start carrying podcasts. So I figured, and here's where you, here's the link for you to sign up and everything. So I signed up for it, never heard from them. This had to be six months, eight months ago. Never heard a word from them. And uh, didn't know what was happening with it. So I'd forgotten completely about it. I just went, ah, they were blowing smoke out of people's asses and acting like they were going to get into the podcast business and start curating podcasts. And today I get this note, and it says, Good news, your podcast, Alex Bennett's Ramble, has been added to iHeartRadio. <laughs> so we're on iHeartRadio, or at least on their site. I mean, we're not on iHeartRadio, the radio stations. We're on iHeartRadio, who carries the podcast. So if you go over to iHeartRadio, put in Alex Bennett's Ramble, okay? It'll take you to our page. 
And on that page are way too many episodes of the show, some of which aren't even active, and I don't know how they got those or whether they started curating them a couple of weeks ago, and when I got rid of those, uh, it hasn't updated itself. But I anyway, the first six or so shows there are quite usable. And uh, if you go over there and then start following us, that would be that would be a help. That would be nice, okay? So anyway, and I think next I'm going to try and get uh, Jack Bishop's show up there uh, as well. But right now, it's uh, the Alex Bennett's Ramble, and you can go to iHeartRadio.com and uh, uh, go for it, okay? Um, let me see here. So, hello, Scott. Hey, Alex. Hi, Charlie. Hi, Alex. <laughs> well... Here we are, all alone. <laughs> let's talk about Trump. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about Trump. Oh boy, uh, that uh, I, I, you know, uh, are you sick of talking about Trump, Scott? Uh, yes, I am. But nevertheless, what? You, what you, else is there to talk about, right? You could talk about the uh, the, uh, the the stand for the new uh, Apple monitor. Oh, 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 yeah. Well, let, let's talk about Apple for a moment. That's good. Yeah. Okay. okay. Apple held their developers conference, and at the developers conference, they announced all these wonderful, wonderful things that they're going to be uh, uh, having for us come the end of the year. All right? One of which is the replacement for this trash can. Okay, uh, the Mac Pro. Right. Now, the Mac Pro, by the way, if you wanted to get into it, uh, in a top, uh, into it at a base price with a fairly decent configuration, it would cost you about two thousand, three thousand dollars. Okay, this new one starts at six thousand. And what happened was, in the old days, I had a, a computer here, I wish I could show it to you, that was the Mac Pro that came before the, the trash can, which is called because, quite rightly so, it looks like a trash can, a very expensive-looking chrome-covered trash can, but a trash can nonetheless. And um, the old one had all these holes in the front, and they used to, and kind of a little handle on it so they referred to that as the cheese grater all right well apparently somebody at apple got the idea let's go back to the cheese grater but let's really make something that really looks like a cheese grater <laughs> and if you if you see a picture of this thing it's got like a handle that looks like the thing you have at the top of a cheese grater to hold it and then the whole thing really looks like a cheese grater. That's side, huh? All four sides, like different grates. No, no, the sides the sides are flat, and the oh. back is again a cheese grater. Oh, okay. And then they came out with this, and that starts at six thousand dollars. And somebody said if you wanted to max it out, and I like my trash can is maxed out. Okay, there's nothing else you could add to the trash can. All right. Uh, it's got, you know, uh, uh, 12 core and blah, 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 blah. Well, this thing, uh, <laughs> this thing has more than that. And if you want to take this new version of the Mac Pro and max it out, it will cost you somewhere like $30,000. Oh, my God. Yeah. Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> Now, I was very lucky. I got this uh, this uh, 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 trash can, and it's a good-looking little machine, and then it's fucked up on me, and it went bad because one of the uh, display boards blew. I got it off of eBay. What do I expect? So I go down to, you know, down to Apple, and I say, I think it's a, it's a, a, a board, and they said, yeah, it probably is, and then they said to me, we have to replace the boards, and they replaced the boards on this thing and uh, they replaced the board on this the uh, graphics board on it 
Uh, and uh, that was terrific because uh, uh, the, it, it was going to then be kind of a nicer, better, the picture will be fine and we get it fixed. Where, where's, where's Jeff? I just brought Jeff in and it's, he's like, oh, there he is. Oh, yeah. there he is. Yeah. Anyway, so I, um, uh, they said to me, oh, yeah, we're probably going to have to replace that. Tops, this will cost you like $359. I said, okay, that's fine with me. 359 bucks, oh, that's, that's good, I'll pay for it. So then they, they fix it, and they, they, the first board didn't work. There are two boards in there, so they had to replace the other board, and then it worked, but they said the, uh, the heat in it is a little high, and we can't get it to go down. So we have to send this down to Houston, all right? So they send it to Houston, and Houston looks at it and does a assessment of it and decides that I need a new, new, two new graphics boards, okay, that I need uh, my memory replaced, and uh, what was the other thing? Um, uh, they replaced, uh, oh, they replaced the CPU, the Central Processing Unit, the 12-core processing unit. Total price of this repair was $3,000. But I didn't have to pay it because Apple has a policy. If we quote you a price and that doesn't fix it, and then we have to send it to one of our other people to fix it, it's gratis. So they replaced almost everything in this computer for free. Got it back. Then, as you all remember, the thing would go 10 minutes and then it all of a sudden would reboot itself. Well, I had to take it back. They said, it's got to go back to Houston. I wish I had the air miles that this trash can had. So they sent it back to Houston. And in Houston, they decided uh, it needs another CPU, and it needs a new uh, logic board. And uh, while we're at it, I think they replaced one other thing. And uh, they sent it back to me, no charge. Everything in this trash can has been replaced. It's like I got a new machine, you know? So uh, that was the story on that. And, and thank God, you know, for Apple, they really treated me well. I, I, I have no complaints with what they do because the total fix, fixings of this thing came to $5,000 and I didn't pay, a, I paid $359, okay? So anyway, where was I going with this? So anyway, this, this machine is, is treating me pretty well, I guess, now. It's working fine. It's got a lot of power, but it's, it's maxed out. And if I bought it uh, off the shelf and said load it in with all this, this stuff, uh, Apple would charge me, let me see here, how much? Um, I think somewhere in the neighborhood of $8,000. But that's a completely maxed out trash can. This new thing, you completely max it out, it's going to wind up costing you um, $30,000. I'm sorry. You know, even if I was making fuck you money, I don't think I would buy that at that price. You know? So, so that's their newest little... Well, the yeah. monitor is $6,000. Oh, oh, the monitor is $6,000. <laughs> yeah, this, they have a monitor. It's six k Now, mind you... You can't even see 4K, all right? But they've got a 6K monitor that's calibrated, and it does this, and it does that, and it's $5,000. It's $5,000. Oh, it's $5,000. But it comes, doesn't come with a stand. <laughs> and the stand, the stand costs another $1,000. So $6,000. You know, for another $1,000, I'd want that stand to blow me. You know, I mean, come on. What computer monitor doesn't come with a stand? Yes, Jeff. You you bought that used, right? Right. What did it cost you to buy it? Used, 3300 Yeah. And, I mean, I, it's a great little, little computer. I can't complain about it. But, of course, it isn't their state of the art now. You know, I it doesn't have all the... Uh, blow me factors in it and stuff you know so it's 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 really terrible it's really horrible uh and and i just don't know why 
you know, uh, they do have, I, I say, why don't they have a lower price Mac? They do have lower price Macs. The mini Mac can be fully loaded out for somewhere in the neighborhood of $3,000. And you've got a pretty, pretty powerful little machine in the mini Mac. But uh, I just think that they should bring the price on this thing in just a bit lower, you know, because we're used to the Mac Pro coming in at somewhere in the neighborhood of 3000 You know, all my old ones were anywhere from twenty five to $3,000. So anyway, that's what Apple did. That and a whole bunch of other stuff that they're, you know, they're foisting on the phone. They're doing away with iTunes. Yeah. Oh, uh, wow. Well, they're separating it into three components. It will have all the functionality of the old iTunes, like I use it here for the playlist that uh, the uh, the twenty four seven generates. You know, uh, um, so it does that. Uh, but and it will do that now. But it's, they're separating it into music, podcast, TV. Okay, rather than having it all in one. All right, so this has been something I think they've had since 2003, iTunes, maybe 2001. I think whenever they first came out with the, um, the iPod, uh, the iPod, it was a way of, of serving the iPod with music, you know. So anyway, uh, 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 you know, it, it's just more Apple charging too much for something and yes, granted, this is a quality machine, but they told us that's what the trash can was. And then now people are saying, eh, it's a piece of shit, you know, compared to this new thing, you know. And I, I, I just knew that, uh, you say, why did I buy this rather than wait for the new one? And the answer is because I didn't want I knew I was going to, they were going to charge something like 5000 to get into it. And so the lowest model of this, the lowest with all the stuff in it is that price. So, yeah, what the fuck, you know? Mm. So, is this what you heard, Scott? Well, I, I just thought that a thousand dollars for a piece of metal, mm -hmm. you know, for a stand, it's, yeah. it's like, is it made out of gold or something? I don't know. Well, you know it, 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 it no, it, it has a, it's a, it's a very nice old stand and then it has a pivot on it. It has a kind of a pivot that comes out that you put it on, and then you can move it around and do things like that. You can turn it sideways, you oh, know. Yeah. But for oh. a thousand bucks for the fucking stand? Are you kidding me? When you know the stand should be free at least. You know, give us a chop together some wood or something, cobble it together, and have it mount <laughs> on the thing. You know. I, I think I read somewhere that they said. You don't even have to use the stand. You can kind of lean it against the machine. I thought, what? <laughs> that's, that's, what said. Just yeah, that, that's what you do when your stand goes bad in your current monitor. You know. Like, I'm going to take a $5,000 monitor and just kind of lean it against the back. Is yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, well, I mean, I, I think that they're... they're, they're you know, I realize that this machine is a professional machine. Yeah. The people are going to use it to make movies. People are going to do it to do animations, things like that. Okay, so I understand that. But you just, I just don't think you, you gouge people like that. And also, there are people like myself who are hobbyists, knee professionals, okay, who want the best machine they can get to edit with. Okay, um, who who don't want to have to pay that kind of money and can't afford that kind of money? You know who's going to buy one? Who? Phil. Phil. Yeah, Phil. Yeah. yeah. No, Phil won't even buy one. I mean, Phil's uh, trash can is a is a uh, is a uh, used trash can. You know. Dude. Yeah. So I mean, no, I don't. Th I don't think Phil will go for this. And if he does, I want to sit here and laugh my fucking head off. You know, do I? Uh, let's see here. I buy PCs and chuck them when I'm done. The phone and replace most of what the PC did. What? I don't know what you're saying there. Hey, Al K. Hey Al K. Call us, will you? Okay. Uh, let's see here. 
Uh, the Raptors are looking pretty tough right now. What's that? I don't know. But uh, uh, I went with the PC years ago just because Apple was more than double the cost of what I built myself. Yeah, the PC isn't that bad. I mean, I you used to use one to do this show, but then when I needed more power because of the need to you know put all these pictures in place and things like that because Skype fucked us over. Uh, I, uh, you know, uh, I, I, uh, I stopped using this, but the, the PC was okay, you know. I mean, it, it's not the, for graphics and things like that and for audio and so on, and for doing video like this, it's not the powerhouse, you know, that it should be, but what the hell, you know, who cares, so. Anyway, so I've been just so tired lately. Geez, I don't know what's wrong with me. I think I've got something. I don't know what. But I'm just always, like, tired. And it's getting hot. And it's time mm -hmm. for me to buy that new air conditioner. So, you know. It's 104 and, here today. 104? <laughs> and that's in, uh, that's in uh, Arizona. Nice Arizona, yeah. Oh, boy. Do you have good air conditioning in your apartment? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Does it cost a lot during the summer? I don't know. We'll see. It's my first summer. Oh, I see. Okay. Mm. How about you, uh, Scott? How hot was it where you are? It was. It was uh, very cloudy today and overcast, and and so it didn't get it didn't get uh, into the nineties. I don't think. I don't know. It wasn't that bad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's probably, I... probably hotter in uh, New York. I mean, you guys been having some hot weather up there. I saw too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 very it's kind of warm in here. I've got the air conditioner on, but this air conditioner is uh, five thousand BTU, and uh, but I don't want to go too much higher because I don't want to blow the fuses and stuff like that because this place is bad that way. So I'm going to go up to six thousand BTU. I don't think that would blow the circuits, and the five thousand isn't right. Yeah. So newer versus a lot more. What'd you say, Jeff? The newer units are are much more efficient and uh, yeah. are like like Leslie to uh, blow up. Okay, blow up. Or to recharge itself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna get the six thousand. I think that should do it pretty nicely in here. It's good for three hundred fifty square feet, and I think that's this. Plus, this is an old air conditioner, so it's huffing and puffing and doing what it got, it's got to do. But uh, anyway, um, so we need some more callers, folks. Al K, you're out there, I know, because you're writing on <laughs> online. Uh, oh, and uh, uh, where's Ray? And where? Well, gee, I wish we had Tom calling tonight because yeah. it's an all clear for Tom. But it also will be on Friday as well. So uh, yeah. you know, and I I kind of like it when Phil isn't here. To be honest with you, not that I dislike <laughs> Phil, but I just feel he monopolizes things, and everybody else hesitates to put their two cents worth in. Do you feel that way, Charlie? Yeah, sometimes it's tough. Yeah, yeah, uh, and well, and Scott just doesn't even want to put up with it. He never calls. Scott won't show up. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's not. It's not. It's not. Well, sometimes Phil just gets me, you know, so over the top, aggravated. I just have to hang up, and I don't like to hang up in the middle of the show because I know that aggravates uh, Alex. But if I don't hang up, I'm going to just, you know. As Alex says, well, I go after well, the Well, please, please, wondering. please call the program, and if you feel like hanging up, I will understand, okay? I'll just disappear, you know, my, my, I couldn't take it anymore. Yeah. If, if that would, you know, as long as you don't get up. Well, you see what I happens mean, if you go away. I won't know you're away for a while because the, yeah. the picture freezes and just stays that way, and I don't know you're not there, so we'll just pretend like you're still there. Yeah. I'll, yeah. Maybe I'll just go to the other room and drink couple of drinks and then come back or something drinking helps it it, it 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 does but it's not good for me i mean it's, well, it's, you, you, well, you know it's gotten to me pretty much uh with with trump is is just the ignorance the stupidity uh, the lack of class if you will you know 
Um, to begin with, the funniest thing I saw was him in that fucking tuxedo with the, the, oh, yeah. at the state dinner <laughs> with the <laughs> gut hanging out over it. I mean, I, who told him that was a good idea? Well, they probably told him it was not a good idea, but that's why he wanted to hide his gut. He no, but he wasn't was hiding gut. his gut. It was sticking out there. I don't know. You know. He couldn't get it baggy enough, I guess. <laughs> yes. He couldn't get a baggy tux. You know? I think to, to go to England and to sit there with all of these people, I think you have to wear that kind of a tuxedo type of clothes. Well, no, you have to wear a tux. In England, they didn't have one big enough for well, trucks. Well, but what you need to do is you need to have a waistcoat, that kind of thing, you know, yeah. with, I guess, the tails and the whole thing. That, that's what's called for. But you certainly can have something that's cut to your rather rotund body that doesn't make you look like you're a fat fucking pig. And he looked like a fat fucking pig. <laughs> he looked terrible. It's embarrassing. Yeah. You know. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, I just, I just, I'm embarrassed for us. You know? <coughs> you know? That, uh, hold on a second. Let me, uh, here, oh, here comes Alan Kroger. I never... Uh, yeah, that's Al, Al K. Oh, Al K. Oh, okay, it's Al K. All right, there's Al K. Let me uh, go to the next. Uh, and uh, Al, where are you? Uh, yeah, there I'm he here. is. There he is. I, I, well, no, I've got to know where you are so I can put you in the. Um, oh, in the, well, it's a secret. I can't tell you. <laughs> no, so I can put you in the in the uh, in. What's the secret? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He lives in a car. I'll, I'll, exactly. <laughs> I'll tell you this: this whole this whole thing with the with the with putting people in the various squares and stuff really looks good. You know, uh -huh. it looks great on screen. And All then, I see is myself in a little picture over here. Well, <laughs> yeah, and I see myself in a little picture over here. So, oh, cool. you know. Me too. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, did you see the president uh, wearing his? Uh, he he always looks when he's at these things like a, a little child who's uncomfortable being there. Uh, I did not. I didn't watch it, but I heard all the audio snips because I I have everything going on audio. I don't like uh, watch television. I like do MSNBC on uh, you know Wi-Fi radio in the car. That's yeah. what I do. That's, yeah. 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 But I mean, it's just, it was just, it, 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 it's just embarrassing to have a president like this, you know? Yes. I mean, even Bush, who wasn't exactly the most erudite of individuals, had more class by far than this guy. And you would think this guy, for all the years that he had a lot of money and was doing his thing in, uh, in, uh, uh, in New York and going to dinners and things like that would know how to deal with a certain amount of dignity in these situations. And he has no idea. Mm. It's like sending a fucking country bumpkin out to do our business for us, you know? Or worse. <laughs> and, and then I love how he goes around acting like, uh, well, you know, if if you'd listen to me about this uh, Brexit thing, you know, because I know business. He knows He knows business? Today they just released, what, Marla Maples? Um, the, uh, the uh, what do you call it? Uh, the prenup? I didn't read it all, but I hear it's pretty, pretty telling that he's, he had, he had no money. He was broke most of the time. Oh wow! You know, uh, you know. So I mean, it, it's just, it's terrible. It's just terrible. We've got a just an absolute fucking asshole for a president. God, it's nice to say that and not hear somebody interrupt me. Yes, Jeff. <laughs> yes, Jeff. Well, I had a, a discussion uh, yesterday about it a little bit, and, and the question is. Is yeah. he stupid 
Or is he smart? Yeah. <laughs> no, he's stupid. Uh, in certain areas, he's smart, <sighs> and and, and um, where manipulating the press is concerned, mm. you know, things like that. He's he's street smart. All right, but he's to begin with. This think that this guy knows how to run a a a business is a complete fallacy because he proved over the years he had no ability at he's maintaining a the business. Yeah, he's been a continual failure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you yeah. know what? The trouble with me is I've always had a dislike for this guy, even before he would. Uh, television before any of that uh, he came to the town that I lived in and he tried to force uh, his golf his phony golf course on the top yeah. of us I mean, which we all knew was just basically a, a ploy for his uh, hope that we'd have gambling in Yorktown oh okay alright yeah um, 90 some odd I well here, like, here's a question that I've always asked and uh I love, you know, I love doing this whole thing of really going after Trump tonight because I know that, that, uh, hold on a second, I'm going to sneeze here. I, I got the allergies. At the one. That's why you're tired. Huh? Yeah. I'm sure that's why I'm tired. Hold on. There we go. I wasn't going to blow my nose in, on the air. Well, I mean, I blew it with the camera in front of me. See, there's my uh, snot rag. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> it's like, I'll pick my nose, okay? <laughs> anyway, uh, so uh, where was I? Oh, yeah, that, you know, that this guy a acts like he's a big businessman. He knows how to do business. I mean, he doesn't uh, even understand what tariffs do. Nope. He thinks a tariff is a... Punishment against another country. It's not a punishment against them. It's a punishment against the public who has to buy those goods and services. You know, the fact is, he goes and puts a tariff on Mexico. Most of your fruit is coming from Mexico. Oh, my God. You know, so your food costs are going to go up about 25%. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's like being taxed. And he doesn't yeah. understand that. To him, oh, it's punitive against Mexico, and they'll clean up their act. They don't give a shit. You're still going to buy the fruits from them. Yeah. And you'll pay, you're going to have to pay the 25% because the tariff is paid on those goods coming in and then passed on to you. It's, it's, it's charged to the people who buy those items and then resell them to you. He doesn't <laughs> understand this. And and it, it it he's really you know, it, he's a moron when it comes to business. He, he thinks the money goes into the treasury, I believe. Yeah. He, he, he believes it goes to the you know into the IRS or something. It's going to help build the wall. Yeah. That's no, yeah. it doesn't go to building the wall. It's paid for by people, who who get their. It's paid for by the vendors who buy the, let's say buy the bananas from Mexico. All right. And then they pay the 25%. Well, where are they going to get that 25% back? They're going to have to raise the price on what they sell to you. That money doesn't go to the Treasury. No. You know? So it, it's just, it's, it's you know, we're, we're, it, it, as I said, the only thing he's really good at in business is to know that the best thing to do with this country is to burn it down and then go for the insurance money. Yeah, you know. <laughs> well put. <laughs> That's uh, his idea and his way of doing business. Uh, no, it's terrible. It's just terrible. You know what I like about this too? Let's really go after Trump tonight in the worst, most horrible ways we can. Because I know Phil will be listening to this tomorrow, <laughs> and he can't say anything about it. You know. Uh, well. And then well, when he, well, then when he, and then when he calls calls the show tomorrow night, I'll come up with some kind of a topic that has nothing to do with Trump. You know. Good thinking. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Phil. <laughs> I thought I'd just pass that on to him. This is what you get for not being here. The thing is that I just I'm just so embarrassed when I watch him. I, I you know. 
and how he weasels around what he said. He was doing an interview with Piers Morgan in England, and Piers Morgan said that you said she was nasty, uh, Meghan Markle. And he said, well, no, I didn't. I said she was something or another. And then Piers Morgan played the tape played for him. And he still weaseled his way out of it. You know, oh, that's his talent. That is his talent. No, my hand isn't in the cookie jar. Then why are there chocolate chips on your nails? You know, I mean, <laughs> he's just, you know, and, and then that whole thing yesterday with uh, uh, I, I, I coming here. There were hundreds, there thousands of people, and they were all cheering me. Yeah. I don't know. When did fuck you become a cheer? Uh, maybe, oh, it's a Bronx cheer. That's what it is. They just think that you're number one. I mean, uh, here are these people. Down, I mean, admittedly, there weren't as many people as they thought would show up, but it was raining, okay? That keeps people away. But there were enough people. There were a couple of thousand people there, and they had some great signs. One was, "I'd prefer to, uh, I'd prefer to have a visit from the Night King," you know. <laughs> uh, another, uh, uh, there were some other ones about, you know, of course Trump go home, and we don't want you here, and you know, and they hate him. And then what he did, he did, he can't keep his fucking mouth shut. He goes after their national health system. Something that is a hallowed institution in England. They don't want you talking about their national health system. They're very proud of it. Okay? No, you should do away with it. It's costing you too much money. Fuck you! Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, it costs then, a lot less than ours costs. And Prince Charles is very big on global warming. Mm. And Trump tried to set him straight. He said, you really should rethink this. There is no such thing. Jesus Christ almighty, what are you doing? All you were supposed to do was go over there, eat some roast beef, uh, fet with the queen, uh, say a few nice words to the mayor of uh, London and the outgoing prime minister, head to D-Day, uh, to, to Nor Normandy and uh, give your little speech and fly home. It's a very simple thing you had to do, but somehow in that process, you fucked the whole thing up. <laughs> yes, uh, Al. What do, you, what do you think he's going to do tomorrow on D-Day? What do you think he's going to do? Let's, let's talk about what this idiot is going to do. No, he's not an idiot. He's an asshole. Well, every president that we've had over the years, practically, has gone to Normandy Hold on a second. I got to blow my nose again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody can make the noise. I just didn't want to broadcast it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. anyway, um, uh, every almost every president we've had over the years has gone to some event at Normandy. Uh, George Bush did. Uh, Barack Obama did. And the most famous one, actually, was Ronald uh, Reagan, who gave a very stirring speech. Uh, it pro was. Probably not, probably written for him, but it was, it was a stirring speech and set the tone for all the others. Um, you know, I don't know what he plans to do, but I fully expect that somewhere along the line in the speech he's going to say something about how wonderful he is. Yeah, I bet you. You know. This... <laughs> Oh, did you, yeah, oh! Did this you is hear the, him on uh, in Scotland. What? He was on the phone with. Uh, was it Scotland or I it was uh, Ireland. Ireland? Yeah, he went to Ireland, I think. And he was telling them what they should do. Shut the fuck up! Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, get your own house in order, and then we'll, you know, we'll we'll discuss this. I, uh, I I don't get it. Um, but anyway, so uh, he um, um, what was what was the other thing? Oh yeah, then uh, uh, Piers Morgan uh, asked him about his wonderful <sighs> bone spurs. 
Uh, uh, burn spurs. And, yeah. and evading the draft. And he said, well, uh, so far as that's concerned, I was never a big fan of the Vietnam War. Mm. Uh, I, I, I like how he puts that. I was never a big fan. Of of the um, of of the Vietnam War. Okay, all right. We're in a big fan. I, that that part, I just, you know, when he goes, I wasn't big. And then, so I, I that's what why I didn't go because I didn't believe in it. Uh, oh. I'm, I'm sorry, that isn't the answer to the question. Okay, no. because you weaselled your way out of having to go, uh, and uh, uh, that, that 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 was a real problem. And he just said, well, I was never a big fan of it. And so he acted almost like he was protesting the war by not going. He, and then he says, but I'm doing my service now. What? I don't see you getting your ass shot full of bullets, you know? I don't see you having to sit in a foxhole all day while, uh, uh, while bombs are shooting over your head. You know, well, I'm doing my service now. What? Mm -hmm. you know. No, no rice patties here in the well, White House. We well, know that. Well, look, I'm even even embarrassed sometimes to say that I spent my military service in Hollywood. Okay, but at least I was doing something for the troops. You know, I was doing programs of entertainment. I was a news announcer there, uh, and and our entire signal went out by short wave to the entire Far East. And at least I was doing something, you know, that I could take certain pride in, but I'm not gonna say that I, you know, I, I and technically I'm a Vietnam War vet. Technically, by a few days, I'm a Vietnam vet. Uh, but I'm not gonna take that claim. But I did what I had to do, you know, I was, a, there was a draft. I could have been drafted for the Army. I decided I wanted to avoid that, and I went with the Navy. And I took a two-year plan that they had of, of you go to meetings for a year, and then you go to the mil you go to Navy for two years, and then you come back, you don't have to go to meetings anymore. Whereas with the Army, if I joined the Army Reserve, uh, I could have I only had to go away for six months, but I would have had to keep going to meetings for six years. So, yeah. so I took the best deal I could find. Plus, I always heard that the Navy had the best food. Uh, the only problem with the Navy having the best food is I couldn't eat it. And the reason I couldn't eat it is I was too busy throwing up from the ship going like <laughs> this, you know. Wasn't huh? it true that that Army uh, plan... You only had to be in the army for like six months. Uh, in the the army, the re army reserves was six yeah. months. Six. But then you had to keep going to meetings for like another yeah, five for years, six or something. years. Yeah, years. Yeah. With the navy, it was a year going to meetings, then two years of service time. When you came out, if you wanted to go to meetings, you could, and they would pay you for it. But if you didn't want to go, you had already done what you had to do to fulfill your obligation so you know so i went away for two years and i managed to get a good gig at the armed forces radio and television service in hollywood and uh uh you know uh, 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 talk about a pussy uh a pussy uh um, a deal i got the best uh as it were let's see here where's it where's all right where am i gotta close this again let me open this up here and then let me double click here and then let me go to, uh, there's Darth I, Pat. Okay, all right. He'll be coming in any second now. Should be, oh yeah, if I do this. Okay, <laughs> and then I do that. There he is. Hi, hi, Patrick. Hi. Hi. Do you hear us blasting away at Trump? <laughs> no, I, um, I was watching just a little bit before I came on here. Biden ending his run for president. Ending? Um, effectively, he is. He is supporting the Hyde Amendment. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. So, so essentially, he is ending his bid for president. Yeah. Except, you know, he would be the one that my family would vote for. Um, so <clears> now, 
my family will be out in the woods again trying to figure out who they should vote for. So, yeah, I thought that was interesting that he, uh, mm. he been running for like a month and now he decided to end it. So, but did he, he didn't say he was ending it though. Well, he, he, he may have, are any of you supportive well, of, of well, well, the well, Hyde Amendment? No, well, what he nope. said is that he was, was, you could say he was putting a bull, uh, a nail in his coffin, but, in his political and, coffin. And, and, you know, your, your face popped up in my head, Alec, because you're the one that's been saying you don't want him anyway because of the age. Well, now you don't have to worry about him because I don't, <laughs> he's going to go anywhere He'll probably be done by the end of the month. Well, you know, a lot of people think he's the one who could beat Trump. And I'm saying I don't think he can because once he gets into the thick of it, he's going to start doing these gaffes, which he's famous yeah. for, you know. Uh, and the trouble with, with Biden, and, and it, it's, it's a problem that, for instance, Obama didn't have the same problem. Obama was the perfect candidate because he did so little, there was very little of a record for him to run on, but there was also very little of a record for people to assail him on. The problem with Biden is he's been around so long, done so many things, and some of them very good, you know, but occasionally he's done some stuff that hasn't been so good, like the Anita Hill deal, okay? And so <laughs> so all this stuff comes back to haunt him. And uh, if you don't think that Trump's going to use all of that, <laughs> and throw in a kitchen sink to boot, you're nuts, you know? So, I mean, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the problem with, with him. Uh, there are some candidates who are um, uh, seem to be coming forward a little better than they were in the past. Elizabeth Warren seems to be showing up very strong. Uh, but I still don't think she's the one who can win. You know, yeah. I think she. I think she. She has some very solid ideas, and as a lefty, she certainly ha has ideas that appeal to me. And she speaks her cause very well in a very unattractive package. <laughs> and, and anybody who thinks that politics in this day and age isn't cosmetics as well, on some level. Okay. Trump got elected. Well, Trump got elected, but I think that the Trump situation, uh, Scott, and I hate to say this, but I think the Trump situation, how can I put this? Better uh, looking than uh, no, uh, it, well, Hillary. Was it, oh, yes, he was better looking than Hillary, to be honest with you. But he, he was a cartoon, and so you could make, people could make fun of him, and they kept talking about him. You know, I mean, what got him elected was the fact that the press wouldn't shut up about him. Mm -hmm. You know, and because here was this caricature. Yes, uh, 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 Patrick. Well, what what was the old saying in politics? I don't care how you say my name, but just keep saying it over and over and over again. Yeah, and that's what the press did. Yeah, the pr yeah. the pr oh, yeah. everybody went to the ballot box. They saw Trump and. You know, a lot of people, that, that's what they did. They preferred oh. that over... Yeah. The, what was her name? Oh, yeah, Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, Hillary was... Uh, was probably the least attractive candidate, and I don't mean from a cosmetic standpoint, but I'm talking that's about it. from a electability standpoint that I've ever uh, seen. She is also one of the most qualified. Yeah. yeah. But she just, the package was terrible, you know. Um, you can't put lipstick on a pig, okay? And when you're running for president, you got to put lipstick on the pig, you know. And, and she did nothing to, she made all the, oh, let's face it, she just wasn't an attractive candidate. Yeah. Uh, and I never liked her. You know, you know that, you know. But I held my nose and voted for. Her. Uh, but uh, I, I, you know, I just, uh, in fact, I can't remember in the primary who I voted for. What? Well, wait, a minute, there were who was in the primary? It was, uh, it was just. Um, uh, Marl, uh, Marl, Allie, uh, Bernie. 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 I think I may have voted for Bernie. I think. 
I can't remember now. Primaries are not my favorite uh, elector election process. You know, I hate it. I, I'm not a big fan of it. Like Trump isn't a fan of the Vietnam War. Okay. <laughs> I'm part of the Vietnam fan club, actually. I, I, I happen to be a fan of Vietnam. I uh, love the way he puts stuff. He can't even put stuff <laughs> in English, you know. I'm, I wasn't a big fan of that. Well, what do you mean you weren't a fan of Vietnam? Is this some, you know, what, what is that all about? No, I wasn't a fan. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's why, that's why you're a draft dodger, you fucking pig. Did you hear that, Phil? He's a fucking pig. He's an asshole. He's an asswipe. I mean, uh, he's disgusting. He's just disgusting. And, and you know, I mean, uh, uh, Meghan Markle, you know, he, he, anybody who has anything that he, he says something negative about him, all of a sudden, oh, well, she, she hit me first, you know. Well, all she said was is that she felt he was a misogynist. Yeah. Which, you know, I think probably... I, I don't know if I agree with her about misogyny. I think he was a... Uh, uh, what's the other thing? Is misogyny... Malignant narcissist. Huh? It was what? Malignant narcissist. No, no, no. What, 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 what? You, I think you were saying the word there, Patrick. Playboy. No, no. Uh, he wasn't a misogynist. He was a, a male chauvinist. Because here's the difference. Here's the difference. I've often said a male chauvinist uh, is uh, bad towards women out of ignorance. Okay? A misogynist is the way he is out of experience. So, you know, I think there is a difference between misogyny and, and, and I think she picked the wrong word for him. He's just a basic chauvinist, you know. And she made these, ba you know, and this was, she made these on the uh, Larry Wilmore show. Remember when Larry Wilmore was on? Yeah. And she was a guest because she was on Suits or whatever. And she said that. And uh, he said, oh, well, she was nasty to me. What do you mean he's nasty to you? She she looked at you, she saw what you said about grabbing women's pussies, and she called you a misogynist. That's not being nasty. He he is so thin skinned, you know. I'm going to attack that country because they're nasty to me. They don't say nice things about me. Yeah. I mean, I just I'm tired of the 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 mayor of uh, London uh, put it best. The, yesterday when he said, what do you expect from an 11-year-old? Uh. <laughs> you know, yes, uh, Al. Well, so does that beg the question, Do you? It, does he do this because he just enjoys shocking us? Or is he just doing this because he's a total idiot? I'm not sure. I, I'm i sure. Okay. I, I think he is a... There is some kind of problem he's got. Uh, that has to do with ego mm. and with uh, assessing his own self-worth. You know, I, I don't know how to put it. Uh, he, he, there's some kind of, of psychological problem he's got that makes him act the way he does. You know, all of us, most of us, even me, who was always Mr. Snarky on the radio, right, I knew that there was a certain area you didn't step into, you know, and that you, you remain true to a certain dignity. Uh, and he has no, he has no filter. That's what it's all about. He has no filter because it's all about him. Yes, Patrick. Well, that's what I was going to say. It's, it's almost as if he has no ability to stop himself. It reminds me very much of um, there's a gentleman that I mentor who had a brain injury. Mm -hmm. And when he's, he sometimes is inappropriate mm -hmm. when we're out in public with jokes and with comments. And the thing is, as soon as he starts saying something, 
he does know that it's wrong, but he cannot physically stop it mm -hmm. because just the way that it's happening. Oh. And I, Trump is a lot like that, um, only more conscious of what he's doing. And like you just said, you knew that there was a line that you didn't step into, mm -hmm. and that he he just can't leave well enough alone. I mean, if somebody called me a fatty, fat, fat, fatty, fat, 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 you don't have to respond. And sometimes uh, responding pisses the people off even more. Well, to begin with, you're the, you know, you've got the, uh, you've got the, uh, the, the lectern. You've got the podium. Uh, you've got the national microphone. Um, somebody says something nasty about you, they don't really have the ability to be, what's the word I'm looking for, a bully. You do. And because you have that ability to be a bully is precisely the reason why you don't become one. You know. Uh, he has misused his national podium for just the worst things. You know. And I, I, I dislike him intensely. By the way, Al, are you driving... No, I'm not driving. I just needed a, a quiet spot where we can keep everybody in the neighborhood up. Oh, I <laughs> see. Okay. All right. I was just wondering. So I'm outside in my, my apartment. I went outside and I said, okay. You, we'll because you're yet. sitting in the car and I didn't don't see lights going by, you know. But, <laughs> and, and not I, many on the here. other hand, I didn't want to think that you were driving and, and talking <laughs> on a talk show at the same time. That would be a trick. Maybe I'll try that next time. <laughs> yeah. No, please don't. <laughs> okay, I promise not to. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, um, I'm trying to think of. Uh, I was trying to think of DUI. What could it mean in your situation right now? <laughs> Driving under the uh, internet, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, I, all I'm saying is we we don't. We don't have a lot of candidates out there, I think, who can beat Trump at his, no. at his own game. Uh, I think Pete Buttigieg, uh, Buttigieg, gig, 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 <laughs> appeals to me because he's a, uh, he's a clean slate, you know? There's not a lot that, uh, you know, Trump, in order to win, has to be able to dig his claws in. And, and stay there, you know, and, and keep niggling away at, at the opponent. And in the case of Buttigieg, what's he going to say? I don't know. Guy served his country game twice game in Afghanistan. He went to Harvard. He speaks nine different languages. You know, he actually ran something, you know, even if it's a city. You know, so... I think he's the one that could probably have the best chance against Trump. Anybody disagree with me on this? Please jump in. I think he's uh, almost another Obama. You know what I mean? Well, Obama won because he didn't have that record. You know, right? He was a clean slate. He was a good-looking guy. Cosmetics, cosmetics, uh, and because his mother was white, the white people in America felt comfortable with the black guy. You know. They would okay. always keep saying the same thing, which used to piss me off. Well, he's not all black. <laughs> and I would say to them, well, you know something? Think about it for a moment. He's not all white. <laughs> you know? I mean, I always hated that. That was so racist. He said, well, he's not all black. Well, good for him. You know? Mm. Uh, yeah. Who are we going to run for president? Louis Armstrong? I mean, come on. Give me a break. Uh, Miles Davis. <laughs> I could, when he started to run, I said he's the stealth candidate because he, he's got all the things going for him. Good looking, sharp, smart, speaks well. Great orator. You know. Yes, uh, Charlie. Well, I was going to disagree with you that he's the best candidate. I think any of the uh, Democrats could beat Trump if they run the right campaign. Um, that problem, though, is getting them to run the right campaign. Yeah, Hillary didn't win the run the right campaign, or she would have won. Well, yes, uh, Patrick. You guys are aware that 
Now, I, I personally have several friends on Facebook who are Bernie bros, and oh. they are Bernie or nothing. They are well, not, they're not the Democrats that are out there saying, vote blue no matter who. They are, if it's not Bernie, they're not voting for a Democrat. They're going third party. And, you know, just so you guys are aware that there are people out there like that. Well, now, that's, that's, you know, what was very funny was uh, there were some people who, when Bernie Sanders didn't get the nomination, they said, well, uh, I'm going to have to figure out who I'm going to vote for if Bernie doesn't get the nomination. When Bernie didn't get the nomination, they voted for Trump. Now, how do you, how do you go from Bernie Sanders to Donald Trump and have any kind of conscience? You know? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Yes, Al? Uh, that never made sense to me. I don't know that I buy into that one completely. You know what I mean? I, I believe a lot of people get fed up and say, I don't want to vote. You know, there's no doubt about it. And in my in New York State, we have the paper ballots. You can pick on every pick every candidate except the president if you feel like it. And I think maybe that might have happened, but I don't know. Maybe, I don't know that anyone has ever broken it down and tell us if that's what happened. Well, I think what the problem is uh, more yeah. than anything else uh, is uh, to begin with the electoral college. I mean, let's face it; she did win by three million votes, and that's not a small amount of votes. No. Okay, she won the popular vote, but she didn't play this numbers game with the Electoral College well, and so she didn't campaign in the right places or nail down the right places or whatever. And we shouldn't have to play that kind of game. My feeling is if I have one vote and it's going to count, then it better count, uh, it, it better count in the total. In other words, I don't want somebody losing by winning three million votes, especially yeah. when one of those votes is mine. You know, yes, Jeff. Sorry. If you want to play politics, you got to play by the rules. And those rules are not going to change. Actually, they are. There's like 15 states that have already voted to say that their their electoral votes are going to go to whoever wins the popular vote. Well, well, that that's a beginning. That's a way around it. But right. uh, you know, this was something. The electoral college was They're something. They're allowed to do that. They come up yep, with all yep. these reasons yep. why the electoral college yeah, came they get to, to be. Yeah, pick how their electoral votes go. Well, what they said was that they wanted to even it out for everybody. No, that wasn't the reason they did that. The reason they did it was when they first held elections in this country, and they had to get the votes in from Maine. Uh, somebody had to ride by horseback to Washington D.C. to deliver it. So what they did is they came up with this electoral college in order to send electors down there so they could make the whole thing simple. Um, because it took a while to add up all the votes, and then you had to figure out who won. So they said, here's the best way to do this. And it was set up for that time and that place. Uh, and I just, um, uh, I, I think, and, and the same thing's true of the Constitution. I mean, I think the Constitution needs a rewrite because... After all, it is an awfully old document, and I don't care what you say, nothing is that durable over time. You know, and our needs have changed, and, and our problems have changed, and, uh, you know, we, we, we shouldn't, you know, we shouldn't have had an equal rights amendment, for instance. We shouldn't have had to. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. yeah, that's the truth. Yeah. So, uh, whatever, you know. Well, I want to go to sleep. No, uh, <laughs> I've been so tired lately. I don't know. It's, it's these allergies, I think. Because listen think to me. Allergies. To my eyes. Stop drinking so much coffee. Huh? <laughs> what? Stop drinking so much coffee at night. Well, I, it's the only way I stay awake if I didn't do uh -huh. this, folks. You know. Hmm. All right. So anyway. Um, uh, and, you know, I, I, I've been di digging away at the primaries, too. I think they're useless. Oh. You know, come on, parties. Just figure it. Go have your convention. Figure out who the candidate's going to be, and then we'll decide whether we're going to vote for them or not. That's the way they used to do it. 
<laughs> you know, and 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 that way you hold your your nominations in uh, in like oh, oh let's say uh, July, August, okay, and then for the rest of the year for about another four months we have the election. All right, we have the campaigning and all of that, but let's not give MSNBC a way to make money for uh, for a year and a half, two years. This thing goes on so long now, it's, you know, it's like if they said, you know what we're going to do this year? We're going to start the 2000, the 2020 baseball season this month. <laughs> okay? <laughs> you know, I mean, it makes no fucking sense. And, and how much money do these, these uh, uh, primaries cost the states to do? You know, it's not a cheap thing to hold an election. No. So you got that problem, you know. You got, you know, and and I and, and the thing was, we, up until what the somewhere in the first part of the last century, like around 1925, when was the first primary? We didn't have primaries up to that point, and we shouldn't have them now. You know, I mean, I uh, I I hate primaries. I don't feel my vote's worth shit in a primary. I don't feel my vote is worth shit when it's boiled down to an electoral vote. Yeah. You know? Yep. So, eh. But anyway, so we got Trump as president. Boy, are we lucky. <laughs> the only people that are lucky is MSNBC. What yeah. would they do for programming if they didn't have Trump? I don't know. <laughs> uh, you know what's funny? People like Charlie, myself, I think probably Jeff, I'm sure you all, are, we should love MSNBC, shouldn't we? Should. Do yeah. we? I tried. I, I can't fucking stand them. You know, it, it, it's like, it, it's, it's tr all Trump all the time. And phony polls. And, and yeah. phony polls, yeah. Oh, then we get the polls. Oh, the polls, the polls, oh. the polls. Well, didn't they have uh, Hillary winning? Yeah. Yeah, 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 I think so. Yeah. Yep. And technically, they were right, but they weren't going by the right bellwether on that deal. Nope. You know. That's right. So anyway, well, what can we talk about for the last twenty minutes that isn't Trump? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that kind of, what. Talk about Warren. Elizabeth Warren? Yeah. Yeah. What about her? Kamala Harris. Uh, huh? was interviewed uh, the other day, today, I think it was mm -hmm. today, and I got to hear part of it. And you know what? She's very good. Oh, yeah. she's very oh, good. I... Yes. Yeah. But, but she's good to you and me because we're not stupid. We're not missing a tooth. Oh, wait a minute. I am. But <laughs> we're not missing a tooth. And and she appeals to you and I because we're intelligent. She appeals to Al because he's Well, she's a professor. So. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. And, and, and we like the professorial approach and all of that. How okay. does that play in, we'll say it now, Patrick's part of the neck of the woods? How does it play in Wisconsin, Patrick? Well, I, Wisconsin right now, we have a, a Democrat for a governor, and I think she would do fine because we switch every four, mm -hmm. eight years. So she'd do fine. If within my family that I have doubt that she would do well. So Biden, I think, is the one that would do well in my family because he is more of a... Kennedy Democrat, a Clinton Democrat, a, a Obama Democrat, that's the type of Democrat my family likes. Mm -hmm. um, thing beyond that, like I've said many times on this show, uh, when they say the word socialism, anywhere in anything dealing with any topic, it's an automatic turnoff for my family, and they, they won't go beyond it. Yeah, but you, know, you know what always gets me about these people who are against socialism? Is they live in a country that has a large dollop 
of socialism in it already. You know, I mean, all you know, you, the fact that your roads get paved is socialism. You know, the fact that uh, uh, the, you know there are any number of programs, of police departments, is socialism. We all pay for the for the police department. We all pay for the fire departments. You know, we we pay for the, for a lot of different departments that we have. We have a lot of socialism in this society already. But these people who hate socialism don't consider it socialism. They don't understand it. And all socialism really amounts to is taking care of the basic needs of the people through the monies that you raise in taxes and so on. I mean, wouldn't you rather see your money going towards your health than towards uh, building another bomber? You know? I mean... Well, I'd rather build another bomber. I just, I don't want to build another sports stadium. Well, I, and okay, there's a good example. It's good with the military. You can Listen. throw all the money you want at the military, but not at a sports stadium. So. Well, I, I'm the first one to agree with you on that. I don't think these fucking assholes should, you know, you want to move somewhere else because we won't build you a sports stadium? Bye-bye. You know, I mean, <laughs> fuck you. You know, and, and, and here's what happens with these teams, right? You build them their fucking stadium, and they stay for about 10 years as long as the stadium isn't falling apart. And then when it's, uh, they need a new stadium and you won't give it to them, they move somewhere else. Fuck you. And secondly, these are businesses. These are not, you know, if I told, uh, if, if we told Amazon here in New York, whether well, it was the thing that got people mad, Come to New York and we'll help you build your uh, your big warehouse. People here got incensed. We got we got subways that are fucking falling apart, and you're going to give them three billion dollars to move to New York. I mean, why do we give this money away to businesses who have to should rise and fall on their own abilities to survive and you know not survive. Why should we bail them out? And so the same thing is with teams. I mean, I just don't think that people, the city should build stadiums for teams. Teams should build their own fucking stadium because they're going to take all the all the proceeds from it, aren't they? Yep. yep. Yeah. The tickets aren't for free. You, you know, they're not giving money back to the city. Oh, well, but it's giving jobs. Well, find some other way to make jobs in a city, you know? Really? Pay Amazon $3 billion to move into your town. <laughs> It'd probably be cheaper than building a fucking stadium. But uh, how's that sports stadium going for you, Patrick? It's just great. Uh, yeah, I mean, both of them. The Miller Park and the damn uh, Buck Stadium for basketball. Well, you got, you got two of them that have been built. Yep. And is that yep. on the taxpayer's dollar, All, both of them? Oh, yeah. And and the thing with the basketball stadium, which really pissed me off on that, mm -hmm. was five uh, owners each put in something like, I want to say, $500 million to in, in investing on buying the team and building, and we, the taxpayers, are stuck paying an additional five hundred million. Mm -hmm. Could have thought that between those other assholes, they could have split another hundred million from each of them to cover it. But yet they, they stuck us with it. And the design of the stadium is it's like a door mall mm -hmm. in part of it. Yeah. We live in fucking state where we have snow three quarters of a year out to my mall, my ass so <laughs> <laughs> oh boy oh boy <sighs> I think I'm going to do something with this uh, with this uh, setup that I've got here I was just noticing if I put myself on the other side of the screen then when mm -hmm. I was when I'd be sitting like this which is my natural inclination I'd be looking at you does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't. I'm too lazy to do it. So anyway, um, I get so tired now. I just, you know, as soon as this is over, I'm gonna 
go to sleep as soon as well i have to wait i can't go to sleep because i'm wait i have to wait for uh, uh for jack bishop to finish his show because he then sends his show in and then i have to post it so i really and and he like here here's damien Damien finishes his show, and I'm telling you, before I'm through playing all the little spots I run at the beginning of the show, he's already got the thing posted. He's off wherever he's going. Jack takes 15, 20 minutes <laughs> to do it, and I have to wait for that, and I can't go to sleep until he posts them. So if you're listening, Jack, try and speed it up, pal, will you? Um... So, uh, so am I wrong about Buttigieg? Do you think that he's not ready yet? Because he, I he, think he, he's doing a good job. I mean, he presents himself very well. I think he certainly <coughs> should be considered as a vice presidential candidate. Oh yeah. You know, <laughs> because he'd be a, well. The the guy who's running in second spot is usually the guy doing out the doing the work where the person who's running for president can't go, hasn't got time to go. And he would do good in those areas. So at least as a vice president. But, I mean, I think he's a smart kid. I really think he's uh, sharp and he's, uh, he's, he's ready. He's ready, you know. Certainly better than what we got, you know. Are you going to take a picture of me? No, not you. I need to take a picture of this because I need to know should white men have jerry curls? Well, let me see. What are you talking about? <laughs> on Fox News right now, he's some uh, expert, of course. And this is, let's see. This is what he looks like. Can you see a jerry curl? Oh. Yeah. Is he, is he an anchor? No, he's some expert. Oh, he's an expert. Oh, okay. Yeah. And... Him, wait a minute. Talking. Let me let me do that. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Remember, I, when I was in grade school, I was a Michael Jackson fan, and I tried to do that with my hair. Yeah. But I was kid. This is a fucking forty-some-year-old guy that gives <laughs> him price on TV, and he's got a jerry curl, and he's white. He's whiter than I am. So. Anyway, I had to take a picture and show well, you guys. Uh, when, I was, when I was growing up, uh, and that was back many centuries ago, <laughs> there was an artist by the name of Bill Haley and the Comets, yes. Rock Around the Clock, and he yep. had that jerry curl. Very oh, good. Yeah. And all he was was like, he, he, they think of him as like this big part of rock and roll because he did a sh pitch, song called Rock Around the Clock. But actually, he was nothing but like a bowling alley combo from New Jersey <laughs> who used to pay, play like, you know, dance music and whatever. And he sang this rock around the clock, and they say, oh, he's the king of rock and roll. What? <laughs> That's the truth. Uh, the Happy Day theme song, uh, or one of them. You one, two, three o'clock, four o'clock rock. Yeah. Yeah. It could so. count. Yeah, yeah, right, right. He could count. I mean, to me, the 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 literally the father of rock and roll. There were two people actually. There was the guy who did what they consider the first rock and roll song ever done. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that was? No. It was called Rocket Eighty Eight. Oh. And it was Ike Turner. Yeah. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if you want to talk about the guy who popularized rock and roll and created the form, Chuck Berry. Yeah. Come on. He's yeah, the guy. Absolutely. He's the only guy I know could write a, uh, uh, put a song out twice with different lyrics and nobody ever noticed it was the same song. <laughs> yeah. he, did, he, he, he did School Days. Up in the morning and out. This game. You know, and and he did no particular place to go, which is the same exact fucking song with different lyrics, and nobody ever noticed that. And I'm going, don't you notice that it's the same song? Is he the, 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 the school days? No. Yeah. Going along on my automobile. Yeah, same song. You know. So, 
but but it, I just think Chuck Berry, it, somebody once said to me, who do you think were the greatest lyricists of the 20th century? And I said, there are three of them. I said, who? I said, uh, Cole Porter, mm -hmm. John Lennon, mm -hmm. was an incredible lyricist, mm -hmm. and Chuck Berry. Because he 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 could take he he came up with words that didn't exist in the English language just so he could make them fit into a song, you know. Like, what is a cool orator? <laughs> what is a cool? Have you ever heard of a cool orator? I've heard of a frigidaire. I've heard of a Kelvinator. I've heard of a lot of things. Never heard of a coolinator. <laughs> but Clever. He, but he made it work. Yeah. Um, and then he came up for phrases like, um, it, it, she, she must be bad because good things don't draw crowds. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, I, I just, I, I just love Chuck Berry and, and I, and, and the three of them as lyricists just blew me away. Cole Porter was immaculate. Uh, and, and, and John Lennon was just, you know, if you go back and, and just look at his lyrics, you just go, wow. You know, they just, they, they fit like a hand in a glove. You know, it's beautiful. Just beautiful. So, anyway, well, last night I, we were talking about something, Scott. I thought this was very funny, and you were talking about the fact that this program suddenly started talking about good restaurants. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and and then all of a sudden Jack started talking about good restaurants. Uh, I was I was just saying to Jack, I said, you know, they talk, started talking about restaurants, and I started to fall asleep. Yeah. Okay. And then what's his name? Mike comes up. Hey, what's your favorite restaurant? Yeah. Like, exactly. oh. <laughs> you felt like you were in a time loop, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. I just sat there and listened. I didn't care. Well, come on. You know, it, it, talking about <laughs> places you've eaten that were memorable. I mean, come on. We've all had memorable meals, for crying out loud. I eat. I shit. I forget. <laughs> oh, really? You, you, in other words, to you, eating is just functional. <clears throat> Pretty much. You know what I had tonight? I went down to Italy. That's a place we have here in New York that used to be owned mm -hmm. by Mario Batali. And they threw them out. Oh, yeah. Crocs and all. And uh, they have this place called Italy, and it is just the most wonderful place on the face of the earth if you want Italian food and desserts and everything else that goes with it and salamis. And so I go down there for the ravioli. And I buy the ravioli, you know, uncooked. And I bring it home, and we put some of uh, Lydia Bastianich's sauce on there, and we just we ate the we ate a pound and a half of pot of of ravioli tonight. That was our dinner. Am I putting you to sleep, Scott? Now, wouldn't that ravioli? Sounds, good. Sounds great. Oh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna drive right up there and get some. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> but you don't. You, you would. I went all the way downtown just to get this. Oh my God! I gotta go. I gotta go like twelve states uh -oh. to even get something called ravioli, right? <laughs> See, I might show up. The Olive Garden get the same damn thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Olive oh, Garden. No. When I want Italian food, the Olive. You know what? I gotta tell you. Here we go with food. There are places that you would think that were terrible. But somehow, they're the go-to place every now and then. And the place I used to love all the time was Outback Steakhouse. <laughs> I love Outback. Uh, their prime rib, yeah. right? Their blooming onion, you know. Yeah, right. I, I mean, yeah, it's in some ways, I guess it's sucko food, but it sure tastes damn good. Yes, yeah. uh, Patrick. Yeah, I mean, it's good. After I go every year for my uh, cripple versary. Oh really? Right. Oh wow! With, uh, lobster, right? Surf and turf. It it's reasonably priced. It it good food. It's not top shelf, but it sure as hell isn't McDonald's. Yeah. And oh, you you get good service, and, and that's what I want. 
And there was, you know, there was something to be said about consistency of the food. I mean, uh, I would imagine if I went into Outback today, I would not sit there and go, not as good as it used to be. It's probably exactly the same as it used to be, you know? Um, but I used to love going there. I used to, it was one of my go-to places, you know? And when you talk about uh, pasta and you talk about the Olive Garden, uh, Olive okay. Garden used to be terrible, but it got better. Because oh, okay. what they did is they sent their people, their cooks and stuff, to Italy to study how to make the stuff right. And they improved their food there quite a bit. So I don't know. Have anybody been to Olive Garden lately? Yeah. Well, I guess that's why they may be going out of business. But anyway. <laughs> well, it's been about a year, but we used to go pretty regularly. Yeah. I went there for my uh, uh, my daughter went to go there after her graduation in Fayetteville. Of course, it's Fayetteville. Where else are you going to go? Okay. Arkansas. But yeah. said, it was good. It was fine. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I never could figure out, uh, you know, uh, why people were always so critical of these places because some of them are not bad at all. I mean, I, I could not get Marjorie to go into any of them. She's got to go someplace with the name La in front of it. You know, I mean, she she's she's a snob that way. And if I said, let's go, come on, let's go to the Outback. I, I really I have a craving for their uh, blooming onion and their and their and their uh, prime rib. OK. And she would go, oh, Outback. Oh, and, <laughs> and, and, you know, she's missing out on some great uh, skunk food, yeah. you know. Uh, but I but she's so snobber, snobbish that way. Oh yes, no, I've got to go to. Uh, she's got this place she goes to all the time called Sarah Beth's, which isn't bad, but I'm getting a little sick of it because she likes to go there all the time, you know. But uh, I don't know. I just uh, um, so here we go talking about food again. Is is Scott is uh, Scott still awake? All right. <laughs> I'm 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 on the uh, food story. Today. Okay. Okay. Current, current, current information. Uh, I take this lady out for lunch. I kind of have like a quasi business relationship with her yeah. over the years. What? She's a hooker? And, no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I decided I'm definitely gonna pick up the ticket. Yeah. Okay. No problem. And so I selected the place. It's a really nice place, right on the water. And it was kind of a, it was a, the, the weather should have been beautiful. Yeah. It was a little too windy, but it was great. Yeah. And it looked wonderful. Anyway, the food there usually is excellent. It was not great for lunch. But we're doing fine. We're having a long discussions about this, that, and the other thing. And then... It goes, and I pick up the, tick, the ticket, and I stick in my hand to get my wallet. Mm. Oh, no. Wallet. no wallet. Oh, no. Oh, my God. oh, yeah. So I go, holy shit, I think I left my wallet. I says, let me go in the car and make sure I, I didn't drop it in the car or something. I go into the car. She goes, are you going to come back? <laughs> I says, all right, I'll leave, I'll leave my cell phone here just to make sure I'm going to come back. <laughs> she goes, I don't have a cent. I, you, I, have, I, I don't have a dime with, with myself. Oh, boy. And I look at it and she goes, don't worry about it. So she hey. she picked it up? She picked it up. So I get home and I tell my wife about what I did. She goes, we could have said there <laughs> a ticket. Yeah. We're going to full page. Hey, hey, the theme is playing. The theme is playing. And that was a good story to finish. The check. Mailed it to her today. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, hey, that's it uh, for tonight. Uh, it's been very nice. Very nice little yeah. discussion, and we got to say fuck you, Trump, any number of times. And, <laughs> and <you> call <laughs> him horrible names, and he can say Alex was nasty to me. Um, 
Thank you very much to Scott. Of course, we always love having you here, Scott, especially when the coast is clear. Uh, Al, thank you for joining us tonight from your car. Okay. And uh, uh, Charlie, always great talking to you. Patrick, great having you here. Same thing true of, uh, of Jeff. Why don't you all give a big wave goodbye and I'll wave back at you. That's our citizen panel, folks, for tonight. Uh, and uh, off they go. I just kicked them off here so that uh, Jack can use the, uh, the Skype line next over most of the same gap net. Uh, he will be here, by the way, uh, with the intersection, which is up next. And uh, you should call him uh, and you should uh, be participate in it because it's a very, very good show. Anyway, that's it for me. I'm Alex Bennett. I'll see you again tomorrow night right after Damian Chaplin is here with the uh, exchange at 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye.